So this is my Nerf Strife. <laughs> no, that's not supposed to sound good. That's supposed to sound like I've been trying too hard. <laughs> Did a lot of shooting. Hit a lot of people. Destroyed the motors. Oh well. So in this video I'm going to tell you how to make this. Uh, you go on to Thing Universe, download all of them, and print them all out. But I thought I'd give you a few tips on how I actually went about making it, because for people that don't do a lot of 3D printing, you're wondering like, how? I just, you just download it, print it, and you, it's a fail. So starting at the top, muzzle brake. I printed it like this, down here, and I did actually use a, not a raft, a rim, and I printed it up. Obviously because 3D printer is really good at printing on the X and Y, well assuming you've got XY printer, not a delta, it's really good at making circles this way, but if you were to print it this way, as in the beads down here, it, would, it can't make this really round. If it's a M3 screw in the bottom, you can tap that. Now when it comes to tapping through, this is all PLA by the way, you have to go really slowly. Okay, say that with me slowly. Uh, M3 tap, metric. Uh, you need to lubricate the tap all the time, and I just used uh, WD-40, but you probably should something. You should use something better. You can do it by hand. The slower, the better. As soon as it um, gets too hot, of course, then you're melting the PLA, and then you end up pulling out a pile of rubbish, and the hole ends up being the size of the tap. You, every time you do a half a tap or a tap in, you need to re-oil the tap, effectively cooling it, and uh, take like a knife and, and run it down the tap and pull out all the, the rubbish plastic. Now, I actually do it with a drill, but it's really too, too fast, hand tap would be better. But on the very thin things, you probably don't need to tap it at all, and probably best not to tap it, you can just screw the screw straight into the PLA, ABS, whatever you want, rubber. <laughs> uh, but yeah so that's what you can do there there's this here now I ended up printing this a few times and redesigning it to print it I originally printed it like it is a, like this but then the curling that happens happened here and it looks really bad I then went to print it like this which means you need to use supports uh, don't use supports on that which meant the curling happened in here and this was not noticeable, so that was good. Now obviously if you don't have curling problems, probably printing it through ABS you'd be fine. Uh, but we all can't, we're not perfect 3D printers. I only got this pretty much to do this and I didn't have time for everything. So anyway, print that with supports this way. Uh, I've increased the widths of that from this version and I've increased this down here. There again, M3, I do have a black strap swivel thing that you can put in here. Haven't tested that. Don't use it. I mean, seriously. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it would just break off. Especially the one <laughs> at the other end. That would break off. Mm. Moving forward. The barrel. The barrel actually fits onto a worker part which I'm going to show you pictured now. You need to buy that. Uh, I could make something similar and probably will. The reason why I didn't is because of time. There was no way I was going to get all of this done in time. So I bought that and screwed that onto this. There again, uh, I printed this this way up. You don't need supports at all. It takes about 24 hours to print. Uh, then you can tap the thin part, uh, sorry, not tap the, the, the thin holes, but the long holes, like this one's actually a long hole, and the ones that support on here and on the bottom probably should. So the worker part that's in there, uh, which are actually these silver screws here, uh, they're already on the worker part, but because 3D printing is the way it is, you actually need to drill those out of it. For those screws to then screw through and into it and I, that's why i never use uh, any of the barrels and the strife parts because it's just too floppy and this is rigid as there's no way that's going to happen because i don't like the floppiness and you put your barrel on there and it's like where's the and, and your hand grip on there and the whole thing's flailing around you're like where are my shells going i don't know 
Maybe it's because the barrel's flailing around. Uh, so yeah, print that that way. There is a insert on the end here. That there, you need to print out, which slides in there. And the barrel, oh, obviously this is based on a, I think it's a 19 millimeter worker barrel. And that barrel is held in place. You kind of don't need to stick it in because the friction on the worker part is so good that it can just stick it in. However, the worker part has a nose this way, and I just drill the hole on the angle and then tap something in. Uh, tap something in. Tap, tap in. Uh, but not a faucet. Uh, then I put a screw through it, and that comes at an angle and catches the barrel, and there's no way you can pull it out. Not that there's probably too much risk of it falling out, at least when I printed it. I have got the front grip. Just my thing you can see. Okay, there's holes in the bottom. Now the first thing I would say before I remember, before I forget, just do not print this at like 15% in full. In, in full? What are you guys printing? In full. Don't print it at 30%. I printed this at 85 and I would suggest you print it that or more because it's obviously very very flimsy and that's why it looks cool as but it's not strong so print it really strong uh, I printed it like that so the bed's here and that did mean I needed some supports just here where my finger is it's from here to here those are the only supports I needed to add manual supports the rest I just I didn't do it without it uh, the one that fit here, I got here, is a remix, and for whatever reason, people seem to struggle to make Picatilly, Picatinny, I don't know, the rails to the right dimensions. Uh, so that was definitely wrong. Instead of remaking this for like the third time, <laughs> the last time it was perfect, and then I ran out of filament like here. I was like, oh, come on. Uh, I just sanded down the rail. But the one I've got on there, that shouldn't be the case, it should fit. And if it's an M3 nut and bolt, uh, not perfect on this version, on the version on the Thingiverse should be perfect. Now I've got all these rails along here, all thicker, tinny, I don't know. Should have actually looked at the word before I decided to say it on YouTube. It's part of the problem with living in New Zealand, man. There's no guns, really, so I'm... Um, ah. <laughs> so you can all laugh at me for that. Uh, I've got... Backside rail as well. The main reason I add this rail is because this side looked so bad just being blank. I have this one here which lines up with my front rails. And I also have a thinner one, which if you don't want to make any of this and you just want something to cover the gap, you can print the thin one. We have that, which I think I've already talked about. I've got a couple of designs for that. Oh, I haven't talked about it. Last video I talked about it. So this, there's two designs of this currently. Yes, it does look like a... Yeah. I got a lot happier when I thought, no, no, it doesn't look like uh It looks like a Pac-Man. Um, so there's this one here with a strife on it, and there's a flat one, and I want to add one which has the continuation of this look on it. So how that works is that is a M3 bolt. Put that on there. Well, this goes for how also how you mount these here. Print it out, line it up to where you want to, and then drill through those holes into the shell. And then put so these are this side and that side are 20 mil M3 bolts, nuts and bolts, and then you're done. It covers that hideous thing. Go for the to go by. Uh, S4 battery case enables you to put a 2,200 milliamp battery and the electronics below it bigger battery more current so if you've got a 1500 milliamp 50 uh just 50 amp discharge 50c that is still less than a 2200 milliamp battery at 49c because it's relative to the c more current better spool up i have the oh, i actually printed this a couple of times i ended up printing it like that because that ended up meaning that this side was perfect, and this side was perfect, and this side was perfect. But that meant I had to use a lot of infill to do it, it took ages, but whatever. 
uh, the stock at the back you put this end printed like this ignore the red bit print it like this there's a slot on the new one that's 45 degrees up here so you can just print uh, from the beds to support which will fill in the bottom here and the rest of it it, it just prints fine but because that 45 degree if you have don't print overhangs less than 45 then it won't fill up that slot and you'll be able to use that for the crush uh, and on the new one I've got a little collar and made this slightly bigger so this is quite a bit different this when I came to print that went that way which meant the bed was a bit of a gap like that because you want this to be straight up and down perpendicular uh, didn't use any supports except for I put manual supports in this hole here and I do have additional parts to make it look better I um, didn't print them because I didn't get the time this here uh, yeah I've improved that you need a ink for um, oh, what is it called? Lock nut. I had a couple of screws on there and they kept falling off because there's a bit of movement. But that's now hidden in the new one and you should definitely get a lock nut one. And obviously it works. And I've made this in a few different sizes. I've got, there's nothing worse than making parts, spending 24 hours making them, they don't fit together. And that's partly because of the different sizes of not different sizes, different prints if you under extrude it or over extrude it if you have lots of stringing problems like Cura then it won't necessarily fit together so at one point I printed the fat one and another point I printed the thin one but there are two versions of this uh, you can print just a test print print this first, do a test print and then uh, try it with the fatter one if it doesn't fit I'm not sure if you can see but yes I am getting completely rained on <laughs> this is New Zealand, that's why I played indoors uh, I think that's about it. Uh, next things on the list is obviously two better motors because <laughs> because that sounds rubbish. It used to be awesome, but not so much now. Uh, and to fix this whole mechanism, the whole um, trigger system is rubbish on the strike. It's so really hard to pull the trigger. Uh, oh yes, this here. How did I forget about that? Uh, can't remember if I've talked about that or not. But I just printed it as it is. <laughs> printed done. I didn't print the bits in here. You can print them if you want. I wouldn't recommend printing them because you can't use them because the strike is nowhere near accurate or has the range to be able to use a little sight and line it up with that. Uh, it's pretty much useless because you need to aim up or down quite a lot depending on the range all right guys hopefully you've enjoyed it hopefully you make it uh, in different colors we mix it let me know what you think but don't let me know if you don't like it because that would make me sad it's all on thingiverse i have spent an insane amount of time i spent i think six kilos of pla to make this no it does not weigh six kilos of pla but the number of t attempts that I have made and, and final adjustments and readjustments and adjustments of the readjustments and then have things to run out of jolly print and <sighs> I've done it all for you well I actually did it all for me so I could look like the crazy nerf guy yeah yeah <laughs> oh. standing in the rain playing with a nerf gun making videos I have issues. Uh, subscribe if you like. If you don't like, then subscribe to me anyway. If you don't like me, give me a thumbs up. If you like me, give me a thumbs up. Uh, yeah. See you on the next one. Bye.